You're, you were going to a funeral of a great grandparent? Yeah, my great grandmother. Grandparent. Yes. Before you left California for Texas, how, how much was on your mind the fact that you were uh, traveling with medicine that, that is recognized as such here in California, but in Texas could land you in jail? Did you have any sense of this? Severity, or what kind of risk were you taking? How did you? Well, I, I, I don't really. I believe in manifestation, so I try not to put any worries or thoughts into negative things and things like that. You know, um, so I, I wasn't really thinking, you know, that you know anything was like this was going to happen. Your grandmother continues, as I listened to the parents' discussion last year, read the newspaper articles, I realized this incident has been blown way out of proportion with charges and allegations that have been fabricated. I can tell you this young man, who was sickly as a child and young adult, and had found a way to manage his health using organic foods and naturally de uh, derived medication, is not a threat to society. I firmly believe that there's a scam going on in Brownwood, an effort to keep the jails full to support the economy of the town. It's a remarkable letter. Mm. Everybody who's seen it has remarked how remarkable mm. a letter it is. Remarkable mm. because she works for the, as a civilian for the army mm. over in, in Germany. That's one of the, right. uh, the aspects. There was something you read there. Um, mm. I wanted to make a statement on Okay, that. good. The, the or, amount of medicine that I had, um, my prescription or recommendation recommended mm -hmm. five grams a day, um, and the amount that I had would have been, you know, I had a total of 21 grams, I had 14 grams of um, the cannabis concentrate, and I had seven grams of, um, you know, cannabis equaling 21 grams um, would have been a five days or four day supply, you know, that it, about the charges, you know, it's seemingly ridiculous that um, they're trying to charge me with uh, manufacturing and um, delivering, saying that I'm trying to deliver it to somebody else um, with such a small amount. With a, is a personal amount. I mean, it's... How have you fared in the Mendocino County Jail? I have not had an asthma attack. I've been congested quite a bit. Um, daily, I am um, coughing and hacking and trying to get up the congestion that, you know, is, I just feel it's just sitting in my lungs and in my bronchial tubes. Um, it, it's, it's hard deal with, I mean, not having the medication and not being out in fresh air, and um, I spend a lot of my time outside daily, so um, I wake up and I go outside, and, and within my daily life, you know. Um, but not here? No, not here. What, uh, what is your confinement like here? Can you describe it for me? Here, um, I'm in a segregated cell. What does that mean? Um, I'm the only one in the cell. Um, there's one small cell, less than a 10 by 10. Um, by myself, I get to come out every other day for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, there's a small recreation yard, which is just brick walls. You can't see anything but the sky. and um, now that it's coming up on winter time, it's getting cold, and the the times that we do get out can be any hours of the night. I mean, any time of the day. Um, one time I was woken up at I think about two fifteen in the morning to ask if I, being asked if I wanted to come out of my cell for my time period out. Have you been allowed an inhaler? I have not. Have you asked for one? I asked. Um, a couple weeks ago and was told that they don't give the inhalers to the inmates, you know, that if one was needed that you'd have to ask for it whenever it's needed. I've been denied medical 
attention to medical care on several occasions. Um, one being last night um, until about 10 o'clock this morning. Um, I was having severe tooth pain and had requested some ibuprofen um, and was denied ibuprofen last night and was told to fill out um, a request form. You know, I filled out this re request form and, you know, told uh, the deputy, you know, when I turned it in that I needed something now for the pain that I'm having now that this request form isn't going to get me the, relieve the pain right now. Um, I was awake until 3 o'clock this morning, um, got about two hours of sleep until they woke us up for breakfast at 5.30 and um, I've been awake since then. And at 10 o'clock, finally um, got some ibuprofen this morning um, to relieve the pain in my, my tooth. Um, Tell me about the food. I mean, you you found that eating an organic diet also assisted you your your healing. Not only with um, you know breathing, I, I've actually found that certain foods help induce the, the asthma um, or certain ingredients. Bring it about. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I do eat an organic diet, um, vegetarian and most of the time vegan. And um, Outside of confinement. Uh, outside of confinement, right. Um, I think it's been about a week today um, that they actually started me on a vegetarian diet after I had put in many requests and um, filled out a grievance and made verbal requests um, to get a, a vegetarian diet. Tell me about the, your day in court in Mendocino County, what that was like for you. Well, before um, I went into court, um, the public defender here, Andrew Higgins, had come to visit me at the jail and, um, you know, said that there wasn't much that he could do um, other than go to this identity hearing and once that they were to prove that, you know, I am who Texas wants, then there isn't really anything that he can do. Um, he had previously provided me with a stack of papers that he copied out of a book. I don't know which book, but um, the chapter was on extradition. I read this whole you know, chapter on extradition, and I, I saw within the chapter many things that could be going on. Um, Can you give me an example? Resisting extradition. Um, in one of the chapters, it said that um, you know the best place to stop the extradition is at the source. So he, following that, it says you know contacting the district attorney in the demanding state. Um, which, yeah, as far as my knowledge, he didn't ever contact anybody. And then we went to court, and um, it was just a matter of them going about their process and you know, you determining who, you know, who I was. You went through three courtrooms, and you looked very dehydrated. Um, How, I mean, had you been given anything to eat or drink? prior to your, the, that day-long ordeal? Very but little. I didn't um, see anybody hand you water while you were in the court, you were sitting there waiting. Right, no. Um, was not given water there at the court. Um, okay. So let's start with uh, Judge Mormon, Ann Mormons. You're sitting there in the docket. It's the first time I've seen many of my supporters and friends or family in 30 days. Um, um, the judge heard several other cases besides mine and didn't hear my case. Um, instead, moved it to a different courtroom, to a different judge, um, which wasn't the first time that had happened. Um, previous to that, she had done the same thing. Um, Did you feel that she didn't want to deal? With the fact that a young Mendocino County man with two children was going to be extradited and face somewhere between five and 99 years for medicine. You're sent to the next courtroom, and what happens? 
there wasn't a judge in there when we got in there. Um, we wait there for about 10 or 15 minutes until the judge finally does show up and then um, we have a hearing. Well, he was a retired judge um, from what was said, you know, a retired judge from Sonoma County. Um, I felt, you know, why am I having a retired judge who is not from this county, in this county, um, working on this case? Um, why was it not presented at, you know, Mormon in, in her courtroom? Um, at that point, were you uh, in shock of some sort? I think I was in, in shock the whole day, um, even in um, Mormon's courtroom. Um, just the whole, mm -hmm. whole thing is... At one point, though, you stood up and uh, said that you wanted a Marsted motion, and uh, when you uh, when you sp spoke up, maybe it was at that point, or you spoke up once uh, again. A deputy crossed the room and and put his hands on your shoulders and sat you down. What was he? He spent quite a while with his hand on your shoulder talking to you. What was that exchange? Very intimidating. Um, he said that um, that they didn't want me to stand up, to not stand up, to not speak, to let my public defender um, handle the case and speak for me. Um, and one thing that I uh, I've learned um, throughout all of these processes is that if you don't object to something, then you have nothing for an appeal. And I felt that at that time what was being said and what was going on, I needed to stand up and object to something. And at that time when I did, um, I was immediately forced back into my seat by the deputy and um, was told not to, to get up, not to speak, you know. Um, let the public defender, you know, handle it. The Marston motion, though, is a motion to remove the person who is representing you for cause. Right. Uh, the, the people who had come to attend your hearing in support were removed from the room. What happened during that time? Um, I explained to the judge that I felt that I wasn't being adequately defended or you know, that um, Andrew Higgins was not doing the best that he could to defend me. And were you, at, you uh, permitted to cite anything from those documents? I did not have the documents with me. Um, so I, I mean, if I would have had the documents, I might have been able to, but um, he did ask, you know, like what, you know? be done and, um, and I told him you know I don't know exactly because I don't have these documents and I'm, I'm not an attorney uh, um, I, I needed a, a different attorney that who was gonna work and do the things that you know I could see in these documents that were provided to me um, to be done you're recommending physician who is a uh, cannabis specialist was there to address the judge about your medical condition and he was not allowed to address the court. Do you want to reflect on that? What the judge said on that is that it's, it's not the time or place, you know, or it's not the proper hearing for, you know, people to speak on my behalf.